one year, two years, that's periodically. Now it's .NET 7. Uh, they have a grace period of one year or something in order to pass to .NET 7 to .NET 8. I have passed to .NET 7 because it's easier and he has some features that are very useful in production. So let's begin. This is the agenda for today. Again, I will take questions. So, this is about me, logically. I should make something like this. What's new in Visual Studio 2022 in C Sharp 11? In Blazor. Blazor is something that I am very keen about it because I do not know if you know, but a SQLite now has a browser version. So, with uh, WebAssembly, you can download the whole database from SQLite directly to the browser. So I could imagine that in the near future, all databases will be in the browser, and only programs for programmers will be replicated data from multiple browsers, multiple users. This is mind-blowing again. And Blazor is the answer from Microsoft in order to download the whole .NET framework and everything on the browser, like SQLite does for this. And then from .NET Core 7, NTD Framework Core 7, if you do not use NTD Framework Core and you use .NET, I strongly suggest you to do it. They maximize the speed from .NET, from NTD Framework. There are comparable edge doubler, but has many, many other features that you will see. And then links, discussion questions, that will be all. So, this is my blog. I am a SP.NET Core moderator. Uh, I have for work here. I'm also an MVP, Microsoft Most Valuable Professional. And I have monthly meetings here for, this is done, for Bucharest on online for programmers, mostly .NET. And see if someone in Java wants to come and present something that is new in Java and how they use it, please feel free to contact me. Okay, so what's new in Visual Studio 2022? This is something that helps me a lot at work. It's committing across many repos. So in uh, Visual Studio, I cannot show you this kind of stuff here, but I can show you where is the bit. Okay, sorry for this. That comes with lab. So in Visual Studio, you can fetch the sources from GitHub from any source control. And if you have multiple sub-modules from multiple repositories, it shows you in Visual Studio. Try it, it's awesome. Next, what is new in .NET 7? So, in .NET 7, what is new is system format star. That means that you can make archives with star format directly from the framework. So it has something like this. And what is interesting is that we have had um, previously zip, so we can. This group should be say we have had uh, the possibility to make zip files directly from Visual Studio, and <coughs> the full name of the tar file the. The, the tar class, it's, if I press F12 and goes there, it's system format star and makes the tar file. You see here the code, tar file create from directory. So if the tar file, the real name of the tar file is system format star, who can guess what is the real name of the zip file that we have had like, I don't know, five years ago? That's very logical, that's, uh, that's okay, but uh, yeah, that's life. Uh, I do not know why Microsoft is changing this kind of stuff and what was the decision. Both make sense, in a way. In a way. Uh, I do not know. So, what I want you to show here, let me open the file. Open containing folder. And let's see. 
here? No. So what it's very simple to create a file. Ah, okay. Uh, for the people that are not very familiar with .NET, this is the main program. So from .NET 6, Microsoft changes everything and makes C sharp similar with a scripting language. So if I look here, it's a scripting language, basically. White line, uh, tag file create from directory, this create from directory, why I have put the prefix here with the class? Because if I have said create from directory, that he didn't know if I want a tag file or a zip file. So something should be there always as a prefix. But anyway, it looks like a scripting language. What it does, basically the compiler put the, seed, the main class and everything there. But for the people that are from the first impression, they say, okay, it's a scripting language. It's not, but it's to attract more people there. Okay, and the code is start file create from directory, zip file create from directory. It's something that is very easy to do. Uh, how the Microsoft does, does this right line? I have put a file named global uses, doesn't matter the name, the, the name of the file, but it does matter that you say global using system runtime interop or system IO compression or system format star. So if you say using this and global, that means that you use all over the place, all over in your program, and it does look like a scripting language because of this. It's not magic, it's just putting something there. And if you say global using static system console, that means that I have system console right line and I can put just, just, just right line. And he append the system console, the system console prefix there. That's console, it's a class, so he appends the class there. It's something simple, but again, it looks prettier than the whole shenanigan with using and global main and everything there. So let's start the program. And you see here ASD, doesn't matter, but I want to show you that if you created the tag file, and let me search a bit. I have repeated the presentation like one hour ago. And this is happening. Ah, okay. Here is the tag file. And what I want to show more, so we pass from the tag. We have this date now to string. And if I put here, I do not know it's it's very long, but it says here D log date, full short time, and so on. So we have date time now to string and the various formats he shows you on the help file on the list box. Uh, okay, I'm trying to put up in order for everyone to not to see it. Let me put it here on the first line and try again. So, you see here that he indicates me what are the formats, the general uses of formats. It's very convenient in order to not search for the definition in the help file that I'm using to, but now he has something like it's called string syntax in attribute, date time attribute, and he can show you everything there. Okay, uh, next I want to show you something that it's made with Roslyn source code generators. This is something that if you are in the .NET world, you should learn, it's awesome. So what it does is like this. The compiler comes and compiles the program. Then it takes the compiler source and gives to a DLL that you put. And you have all the things that he has compiled. So you can enhance and add other things there. Then the compiles resumes and goes with the previous source that it has compiled plus your source and goes to the final product, to the EAC DLL. So, I want to show you that this kind of stuff, Roslyn source code generators, Microsoft uses for his own purposes. And he think about a JSON serializer everywhere. So you have a class in the backend, and in the frontend, you should give the properties 
values of the class. So if I have a person, it gives me the person first name, last name, age, and so on. How does the program does? Usually with reflection. So he interrogates the class and sees. So it was since those generators in those <coughs> network, no more. Uh, Microsoft, what it does, it's using those source generators to generate the properties that should be uh, serialized. How it does? It was in source code generator. So the compiler comes, CR compiles the program, and has a person class. Then Rostin source code generator, the JSON Rostin, comes and says, okay, the person has a first name, last name, and so on. So I should serialize those properties because I know there when I have compiled. So it's a compiled time. And then generates the serializer. So without reflection, this is very fast. Yeah? So I will show you this kind of stuff with message box. So here it's a message box. And for the people that are very old, this is the message box from user 32 DLL, old stuff. And this message box you have seen in, in action. What it does Microsoft the first time with DLL import? So this says this function exists in this DLL with this entry point that you should call, and this is the chart set and blah blah blah. And this here is the definition. With the new Rostin source code generator, I have this library import with this kind of stuff, the same thing that the attribute here will make a generation of file. Let me press F12 here. So you see here the auto generated, and up it says the file was generated and cannot be edited. So this kind of stuff was generated by the Rostin source code generator, and you can modify, you cannot <coughs> modify this file, but from the properties that are here. So if I said, just a moment. I can say I can change the entry point, I can change the set last error to be false, and then I see how the Microsoft is generated the, the calling of the, of the file. This is again very awesome, and again, if you want to learn something advanced in, in .NET, this is kind of stuff that you should, uh, you should learn. First is to score generator. I have made a time bomb comment, so if you, I do not know, you have, in your code source, something like to do. I will fix this later. And I have made a time bomb comment that it's a Rostin source code generator. And if you put to do, I will make this fix later and put a date. If passes the date, the compiler will give you an error. It doesn't compile. Because again, compile time, parsing, give an error if the date is passed. So it's something that is mind blowing and you can add everything there. Okay, uh, I'll pass to the next point because this was the tar format, stringless attribute, and Rostin source code generator. Good. <coughs> Sorry. What is new in C sharp 11? It's center package management, and there is currently no support in Visual Studio. This is something that I must support in Visual Studio. I have time. What it means? You have multiple projects. Each of the project has his own NuGet references and the DLL references. And usually, if you have multiple projects, you put a put a version of the entity framework core and DLL to seven, and entity another project to six, and so on and so forth. So, and then you solve the problems sooner or later, maybe later. Central package management says we have put the version of the DLLs central to near nearby the SLM to the source code to the to the source and uh, each project references this but it's not a support in in, uh, in Visual Studio and I wait for the support in Visual Studio to be ready because I have tried and it's hard to manage without a graphical user interface very hard to route everything by hand second that it's very important and it's what it had does, it's static interfaces and math support. And this is something that Java has from a long time. Now it's come here. I first didn't understand when the feature was trying to put why I need static interface. But then I have understood that's pretty awesome what they can do. 
Let me show you. So the following is what you see so sharp 11. Just a moment. If I have here at the beginning of the presentation, you can download the presentation and the examples to this GitHub if you want to. Good, let me go and see what's there. So I was staying. Just a minute. Folder was in C sharp 11. Okay, let me close it. <coughs> It's a link to what's new C sharp 11. You see here from my presentation just the main points that I think that are important and that was important for me, only for me, for my work. There are other things there that I cannot put in this presentation because I didn't understand why Microsoft has done. Maybe they have sense for you. I do not know. But I strongly recommend for each, each slide to go to see what is new. And generally, when someone does a framework, see what is new there. For example, in React, they do not recommend anymore create React Applegroup, APB, sorry. So they recommend other frameworks. It's, again, interesting times. So what I have here is that showing what Microsoft has done with static interface, one of the uses. So I have a static result sum of T and T result that sums a series of, uh, or series, sums an array. And this array, you see here, I number base. This, so think about the mathematics that you have done in school and the operation with groups that has the addition and uh, multiplication and you have multiple things there, associativity, commutativity, and everything on the, on the Bruce mathematics. He has, they have done something like this. So we have something that is called T0, T0. So T0, we have here the static abstract T0. And this, every number that we have, so if I have int, F12, I see here the int has I min max value. Here there is I min max value. So it has a min value and a max value and static properties that it's int max value, int min value. The same for long, long max value, long min value. Okay, it has uh, the, the, the thing like we can add everything that supports I number base. So this function sum that you see here, we make a result that is zero first. Then I add the result with the value. So the result create checked says, says, says that we have the, the result added with the value itself. And this is very interesting because now you can have your own classes implement the addition and the multiplication. If you define the interfaces, the static interfaces, you can sum everything that you want. So now if you want to have the operation with vectors or everything or the complex numbers or everything that you want to model, you have now the interfaces that you can make this very generic. So and you, if you have this function sum and your class supports this I number base, and you see here the I number base that supports I addition operators that you then you can put plus supports IRDTV identity, T0, and supports many other things. So if your class supports this operation, you can add them. So it's something that it's, again, very interesting that hey, they have remade everything in .NET framework like double and int and all the structs that can support addition. With this operation, they rewrote everything. And now you can make, again, generic, generic, classes that has this kind of stuff. Okay, so what I have put here is some int and long, and I can add int, sorry, some int and long says the int is, I can sum an array of int, here the params t values, 
and it gives me a lot because we can sum many ints and surpass the int, so obviously it should be log or something like this. And yeah, it's it's kind of mind blowing for this. What is at the end something new in .NET is this stuff here. So what I have here as a string, it's a logging with log level that is default information. And this is kind of stuff that I, I want to show you because now you can wrote like this. This is the form that usually, as a human, I can understand better than this form from here. Because this is the escape character and I should get skip of it and it's very difficult. And how it does, you put dollar and you put double quotes for each quote. So if I have one code here, I should put two here and one dollar. If I have two quotes here, I should put here three, and so on and so forth. So this is kind of easier for the programmers to wrote the code with escapes if you want to do, usually in the text, you want to send a JSON to someone and you manage to put every escape characters in all over the place. Now, now it's, it's very simple, you can put here, I can put here two quotes and it does combine. But if I had put here three, you see that I can also, I put again one more here and one more here and that's life. So I know that this is kind of weird, but it's kind of helpful. Let me put this and I have two variables, x and y, and I have put if the console my time x equal y. So it should, sh sorry, control minus, it should show that it's true, the, the things are true, the, the two quotes, the two strings are equal. But again, this is reading easier. I do expect that sometimes the every program, every language program has something like this, because again, it's easier to read for me, for the code. computer, doesn't matter. Okay, and what it has also, that it's again the first to score generator, it's something that is called file class. <laughs> this is something new, uh, the class could be uh, in C sharp and in every language like public, private, internal, so the, the access variable. And they managed to say, I can have a class that could be just in this file. Not on all over the project, but just in this file. Why it is useful? Because if I am a Rostinsus cogenerator person and I generate the code, I do not want to pollute the original project with my classes, even if they are private, for the assembly they are not private. So if I put this file, I cannot access other than in this file particularly. So if I want to put here value to equal to x, even I, I cannot put public, but you see the squiggly lines here that says you are missing an assembly reference. And yeah, it's something that Okay, I cannot, I cannot have this. And <coughs> sorry, something more in .NET that I do not understand very well is the prop. Why it's the use is the required property. What it means the required property? So when you initialize a class, usually you put a constructor. When you have the constructor, you have put in the constructor arguments. Like if you put a person you want to first name to be mandatory. You put constructor and you put first name there. Now you have another modality, required. So you cannot initialize this class, even if it has a default constructor without arguments, without putting my property. So it's a new way to say, mm, doesn't matter the constructor, if I do not put here my property equal one of the class, it says, sorry, the, the, it's a required member you should put there. Doesn't matter. Why you do this and you do not put in the constructor, I frankly do not understand the use case. But I should learn this kind of stuff because I think that the people will use, because not all the people understand the constructor 
and it's a really difficult concept, the constructor, so they cannot understand this required better than constructor. Please. One question about this feature. Um, so my property is initialized uh, from the construction stage, right? When the, the object is constructed. Can this my property be reassigned later? Yes. Or is it or Yes, it's a get set property here. So it's not like final in Java. No, it's not final in Java. It's just a property that can be reassigned later, but should be assigned at the moment that you construct the class. Without passing in the constructor. Again. So yeah, I have here the constructor dealings without arguments. But if I do not initialize here, it doesn't work. The program doesn't comply. Well, one reason about this, um, this feature could be that uh, uh, a way to force the object to be immutable somehow. Maybe this. Maybe if I remove the setup from my property. Yeah, if I remove the set from my property, yeah, it will be more immutable. So it will be just assigned. Uh, no, I don't think that can be. You see the sky lines? No, because I should somehow yes. asset per sky. I think that we can discuss later about the family job and this kind of stuff. Yeah, it, uh, just just to let you know because you can hear what's new, and I said that this is interesting. And you should not be, uh, and uh, you should be understand this because it's a difficulty for me to understand between constructor and the, the mandatory properties. Okay, I have put this, 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 this. Let's see an example if something is more. Nothing. Files copy in that cases. Yeah, and require my property. Good. So I have half an hour. That's okay. <coughs> Blazor. As I said, Blazor is a web assembly thing that the WebAssembly <coughs> could be downloaded the necessary DLL in the browser and interact with JavaScript. And I have a demo that it's somehow controverted, but it shows you how easy it's to interact from the browser with JavaScript and call back the C sharp that is downloaded to the browser. Just bear with me. It's Something that it's uh, let's show let's see the example first and then I explain. Control F5. F12. So if I put here, it's incremented the the the, the number, and it's not a big deal. But what it was is very interesting. It's down. Let's put it up. So we have here something controversial. I try to make it. Well, okay, you can see. So I see here get message from .net, JavaScript set matches, set message, JavaScript get message, and number five. Let's see what it see is here. So when I press the button, when I press the button. I have here the button, yes, and I have an i variable and an s. The i variable is declared here. And on yes, it increments the variable. So this is very simple. It's like a React or Angular framework is the same. It just increments the, the number. Very simple. But the part that is interesting is the, the thing. So when I click on yes, it's a C sharp code that says private void on yes and console write line. And this C sharp code that is translated, again it's the the EFC and DLL are translated to the to the browser. It says call JavaScript get welcome message with number. And get welcome message it's a function <coughs> that it's a partial in C sharp. This function that it's partial, the partial keyword for, for C sharp is that the definition is elsewhere. And it's generated again with also in cross but that's another, another thing. So this definition of get welcome message, I can now call with a string S. And I say JavaScript import with a function that says get message. And because it's JavaScript import, 
The function in C sharp will call it. It's really the function get message from the JavaScript. By the way, the class should have this kind of attribute that it was hilarious. Supported operating system platform that is browser. So for Microsoft, browser is another operating system because it downloads the .NET framework there. So interesting. Like we have Linux, we have Windows, we have Apple, and we have browser. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so the JavaScript import get message. So this function, when I click the button, the C sharp calls the function here that is partial that calls the function get message. This function get message, it's here. This is a GS file, index raise on GS. So this is a JavaScript file. And here are the JavaScript functions. The thing that we should put is export function. So it should be exported in order to call from the C sharp. And the get message has a parameter from C sharp that I have put here. And calls set message. So from now on, I have clicked the button, I have called the C sharp function that it was a JavaScript function, this function, that calls set message. <laughs> what it does set message? I don't know, it's weird with me. Set message imports the global.net runtime and says, give me the test blaze of DLL this DLL that I have here, the project. And what I have, I have exports, test blazer, pages, call JavaScript, get message from .NET. And it calls this function, get message from .NET, that you don't know see here in JavaScript. Where is this function, get message from .NET? It's here. With JavaScript export. And it calls this function from the C sharp that has get message from .NET. So, again, button calls C sharp on the browser, the C sharp on the browser is called JavaScript, and JavaScript calls back the C sharp from the, from the DLL from the browser. Yeah, please. One more question. Yeah. Uh, I saw something, a test blazer DLL. Yeah, this is the name of the project. Test blazer will be yeah. test blazer DLL that is downloaded to the browser. Download it from where? Where, where is it available? From the location of the From the location that I launch, yes. It's yeah. not something on a local machine, it's not it's something uh, remote? No, 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 it's from uh, my, it's here, from the CS Project, but when you deploy, you deploy and deploy the page that will import. Okay. So it's, it's like this. And again, the latest message should be get message from .NET, that you will see here the first message, it's in inverse order. And you will see you will see everything there. So this contributed example is to show you that now the people that do not want to learn big JavaScript, there is a way, not very well, but there is a way to wrote just C sharp and some JavaScript there that they can interact. So for example, if you want to use a JavaScript library like Chart.js, you can have a Chart.js with his function. And when he says, just load me the data, call the C-sharp with the, with the message. So you can interact either way. It's not a Blazor feature per se, but it was easier for me to put Blazor there because it's downloaded to the browser when I press F5. So the only thing that I want to remember from here is those kind of stuff. JavaScript import and JavaScript export. If you remember this, you can have examples that that's mostly not so controversial as mine, but you will see examples and how to interact directly with the browser. Uh, a drawback, the first time when you launch the browser, it will be somehow long because he downloads your DLL and the something of the .NET framework. So it's not so easy like I have this here F5 and all it's working. No, it's something more, more time consuming. Just a moment. Code? No. no. It's no. WebAssembly. It's WebAssembly, the general specification, it's supported by almost all browsers. As I know, Firefox has it, so but I don't want to put my hand on fire on this. 
but Chrome and uh, Edge does support this. And other question? The exact same question. Yes, yes, yes. Just, just a quick question though. Is it faster than just plugging uh, JavaScript? Because it's like assembly. It should be faster, shouldn't it? Should be faster, but depends on the browser implementation. Yeah, it does. Yeah. yeah, so, and for the people that remember Silverlight, is the same thing, but it's supported by a browser. Silverlight was supported just by Internet Explorer. This is a specification between Microsoft, Google, whatever other companies that are important, so it should work. And again, as I said at the beginning, if SQLight has now support for WebAssembly and you can download the database to the browser, it's, it's something that will, will stay here. Good, this was the JavaScript. What is new in ASP.NET 7? And I will be faster here because I have as entity framework. So, for until now we have discussed all <coughs> what it was uh, just .NET and ASP.NET has something that was very interesting to me and it's typed results. So the typed results is something that can show you as a programmer what the function returns. It's somehow difficult parts to read but if you read two, three times, it's easier. So I have this function, get weather in range with a data rate. I will show you this later. And <coughs> it says, if I do not have the no data, I return not found. That's obviously, it's the not found in, uh, in the browser. And otherwise, I return OK with the data. This is very uh, simple thing that I can return two different things from a function that it's uh, a browser called a URL. But how do I know from the definition of the function what the function it does? An OK and a not found. And maybe you have another a throw exception if some, some guy is not of security allowed and so on and so forth. So the idea is that they invented a generic and this is the generic until here. Oh. Okay, bear with me. If you read two, three times, it will become clear. But this is reading like I have a result of something and I split by the comma. Before the comma, I have a not found, so the function can return a not found or an okay of an array. And that's all. Yeah, I know. And if you return three things here, it will take you a whole screen, but that's another point. I think that next iteration, it will be easier to read. So, yeah, it's something that shows me as a programmer what this function returns without reading all the function about this. What I'm saying is that <coughs> sooner or later it will be easier. So I have this kind of stuff. If I have list of t, list of string, a equal new. Just a moment, let me put like this. New list of string that put A, C, and I put B. I have three definitions, and this shows you how .NET framework has evolved. So I think that this results will be involved someone in the next version. So I have three definition of list of string. The first definition that it was first time in .NET framework was this one. List of string A equal a new list of string. And it was redundant. Of course it was redundant while repeating two times the same thing. Then the compiler guys from the framework realized, okay, but new is the string returns something. So I can assume what is there because I know what is the, on the right side of the equal. So they have put var. This is from the from Visual Studio. I have put my Visual Studio. Var b equal new list of string. And this b was list of string. We have put here var, but the compiler compiles 
list of string. And in the next version, they figure out it's hard to read this. So when I read as a human, it says var something equal to, oh, okay, the B is a list of string. So it's hard for a human, it's easy for a compiler, but it's hard for the human. So they made hard for the compiler and easy for the human. So now the definition that I like is list of string C equal new, and I put just parentheses. So it says I have a, a variable that is list of string, and it's a new. Okay, go on. So this shows you how the language has evolved in time, and I bet this kind of stuff will be evolved somehow. I don't know how, but I think that it will be somehow evolved because it's again not easier to read the first time. It's some some kind of difficult. But again, you split from the, the comma, you go to the right part, you go to the left part, and say, it does this or it does this. It does an unfound or an okay of an array. Kind of, kind of simple. Okay, okay, I have 15 minutes. So we have something like shadow copy RS. That means that you can replace a site in production. Never tried. But they said, like this. I'm not so fond. <laughs> and we have something that it's I pass about try pass. Okay. So what I have here, I have here the other learning range that receives from the query string a date range. So how the query string is transformed into a class that is called date range. I know that a post can be transformed because you can transform this, but how does this to be transformed? So they took advantage of iParsable, that is a static interface, that has two functions, parse and try parse. And we have seen this parse and try parse to the int, double, and so on. When you want to try parse or try parse a string to an int, you have this kind of function. So they made this iParsable with static interfaces that we have discussed previous. <coughs> And if you implement the date range with iParsable, it will parse. And I have here the try parse function. And it gives you a new date range on the final. So the, OK, let me put here. So the try parse has a string value, the value that should be parsed. I have a line format provider. And the out parameter that it's returning is the date range that I should have here. Uh, I should make this example with Swagger, but what I have, I have something that I have created that's not the discussion here, is something that transforms the calls of the Swagger in blocks. If you read, you know, Blockly or Scratch, this is Scratch for web APIs. It's my mention, it's not right here. If you want to, we can discuss later. And Again, it transforms the Swagger APIs in this kind of blocks that I can I can make, and I have made this kind of to make easier the demonstration. So pass that range, that date range I have here. I press F12 to see the network, and I execute, and I have this one. So the date range here it will be this date range that I will pass and give it to other class. It's not a big, uh, a big deal. And the next example that I have is that, let me see, it's with rate limiter. What we have here in .NET, we have something that is called the rate limiter. It's in the SP.NET Core. I suggest you to use it. It's what it says. It rate limits the calling of the web APIs. It has various functions. You should learn, it's in, from, from this link, it is very useful in order to slow down if there are too many requests. Uh, I show here an example that it's again a very simple example of this one. I have here, build a services add rate limiter and I put a fixed in the limiter that I permit 20 requests with time span from sequence 5, that every 5 seconds I just have 20 requests simultaneously, not more, the other will wait. And the pure limit is 20, so how many I should process in parallel. So if I have 20, I should process 20 in parallel, I can put 10 if you want to modify this. 
And this is the definition. And as always, when I try to make the example, I have forgot to put use red limiter. And it doesn't work. So you have the definition first. How do you want the limiter? And then you put how to use the limiter, where to learn to use. And this limiter, uh, it's very flexible. I have here, again, a smaller example. It's not so complicated, but you can make a limiter if you want based on the header, on the HTTP request, on course, on everything you want. Okay, let's see how it works. I will show you again with this block link. Load blocks and rate limiter. Okay. So I have here, like, I want 50 requests of get data. This get data request, let me show you the get data. Network request controller, get data. What it does get data? I have an I, and I'm returning received at the time being. And here I have, with count of I from 1 to 50, I can repeat this many times. And the get data, uh, it will be called. Let's see how it looks in the browser. The result of the get data you will see here in the right. But let's see how I execute 50 times. And you see here that it's, okay, you cannot see, it's 21, it has stopped 21. It has stopped at 41, because it's from 20 to 20, it will stop and we will uh, execute later. So if I want to see here, you see that it's received at 51 and 70, it's seconds here. And from 20, here, from step, step 20 to step 21, it's received at uh, 57, uh, here and here is received at 21. So it has a, a window of five seconds between here. Okay, it's four seconds, but let's see. Four, four five seconds between these two requests. Here it was stopped because the window limiter. I have eight minutes, so I'm quite a struggling for NTP framework for it. Just bear with me, we'll discuss, we'll discuss later about this, if you want. NTP uh, framework for demos. What Microsoft made in NTP framework core? Just a minute, this, what's new? Here. What is very interesting is that we have execute update and delete for the programmers that doesn't know SQL, we have update and delete. I will not show you the demo, again, time consuming. Uh, we have all kind of interceptors, you will see this interceptor in action, and reverse engineering templates. So there is something that is called an NTP framework core. It's scaffolding. That means you have a database, you scaffold the database, and you have the C-sharp classes. What is new here, and it's very interesting, is that these scaffolding templates are here. So I have here an NTP type T4 that I can edit. It's a T4 template. And let me try to explain. I have here class. Where is the class? Public partial class entity type name. So if I have a database with many tables that I say table one, table two, this is entity type name. It will be the name of the table. And I think that you can understand here. For each var property, the entity type get properties ordered by. So we have the properties of the table, that will be the columns. And you can modify this kind of stuff. So we have here, Andre here is the entity name that will be repeated into the classes of the database. So I have here the department. Okay. Uh, control T, let me search for the department. Okay, so I have put Andre here as the entity name, and we put here entity name from demo, control S, and now I will generate the table. It's .NET entity framework DB contest scaffold. I have put here the SQL, the SQL connection. Here I put the SQL server because it's a SQL server, and after will be generated, 
okay? After some time, he will take the database, he will go to the database, find the tables, and generate the code based on the template that I have indicated. And it says object reference not set to inside of an object. That's, that's very interesting. Just, I try again. What, what else I should try now? Because again, I have repeated like before this presentation. It's, okay, it doesn't work and I do not have time to repair now. Please. It's for the all providers that you have in entity framework. In entity framework. So we have here the provider. Uh, just put CLS and show you the provider on the on the code here. This is the provider. If you have the provider for the database, you have this kind of generation, and the, the templates are the same. And the Microsoft said we improve the templates and deliver via get packages. So this is one, and I have another five minutes. Sorry for doesn't work. I will come back, please. One more question. Uh, how do you handle uh, table uh, relations for keys and so on? How does uh, is it translate to model? How is translated to model? Look here, department. I have an employee, and here is the list, the collection of employees. And in the employee, I have, why not, in the employee, I have department ID department navigation. So the employee is connected to the department in the way that it's normal. One department has many employees, one to many. And he generates this kind of code. It's not good for serializing, but that will discuss later. And uh, the final thing that I want to show you, and I have four minutes for this, is to show you the interceptors. What are the interceptors? When the call between classes and uh, database is translated, there are all kind of interceptors that comes. Think about the generation of the query. So I generate the SQL where something and I want to modify the web. I have an interceptor, like a visitor, like a visitor pattern that can modify the query. I want to make any, any kind of things on the road from the class to the database and there are interceptors everywhere. What I want to show you is a function here that says is a good interceptor. We have the call of API departments and I'm trying to execute. Let's hope that it works. And says from where comes the retrieve date. So here I have something that it says a retrieve date and it's putting the date of today. But this executes the departments. If I look into the department, Okay. I have here a partial class department. That means that I have another definition. This is the definition from the table. If I need department and name, what I have also is another department that I have a thing that is called a retrieve date. This retrieve date, if you have seen already here, that it's retrieved with the date from today, UTC. How, if it's not mapped, how it is put there? The answer is one special kind of interceptor, again, there are many kinds of interceptors, that says if a class has an interface, and I show you the code because it was easier for me, I will put on the interface the current date. Let's see the interceptor. Let's see, I can sh search for this, other thing, date. And here, this is a set retrieve interceptor that is derived from unmaterialization interceptor. Materialization means hydrating. When the class is hydrated for the database and takes the properties, it goes to this function. And in this function, I ask if is there interface, and it put, I put here the we you see now. And this interceptor, it's referenced on this option builder, and we can put here again all kind of interceptors. There are interceptors everywhere, and it's very interesting in order to modify if you want the behavior or you have a database of tenants or anything, you can put tenants in the settings file and then modify the query to add the end, the tenant ID equals something, something. 
if you want, with just this kind of interceptor. Okay, good. And these are the links. So what I have presented here, it's a small part of what's new in .NET 7. If you want to learn, you have all these things, and I think that this is everywhere. Every time someone make a new version of the framework, you should read everything and ask what it's in for me, what they have done, and it's easier for you to execute, and it's profitable. And thank you for your time. Now, I can have as many questions I have because it's 11.00, so please feel free. Uh, yeah. Just a moment. Just a moment. So, this is the link. What's new 7? I, I can give to you the, the, the final if you give me a phone or something like that. Do you have a Twitter page? I have a Facebook and LinkedIn. Okay. Twitter, not so much. And my name is Ignat Andrei.